when you have a large following, you, it's you're always going to get pushed back. People are always going to have something to say about you. People are never going to agree wholly with what you say. I get lots of negative comments, but I get so many positive comments and interactions and messages that I'm just like, you know, the, the positives really do outweigh the negatives for me at this point. So in March of 2016, um, my friend and I were actually going to the movies and just a random Thursday night or something like that and then um, the movie was sold out so we were like that sucks well, let's just go get some food we'll go back home we'll smoke a joint and we'll just like hang out and eat food so we did that we went back home we had Burger King and I, then at like midnight I get this knock at the door and it's this police officer and he comes in and he's like the thing that you're like dreading for forever but I knew was coming um, you know you're Laura Hesp is Douglas your father um, we found his body and I'm just like, okay, this is like the day I've been waiting for. Um, and then um, they were like, you know, you need to come clean up the motel room. And like, I had no idea. I've never had this happen before. I didn't know protocols or anything like that. So I'm like, I'll be there. I'm trying to call my family. I live in Toronto, they live in Brampton. I'm trying to call my family. I need somebody to drive me down to this motel. I ended up going to Caledon to get some of his personal like IDs and stuff like that. And then this police officer hands me a box of latex gloves and she's like, you're gonna wanna be careful. We're gonna need you to like, you know, clean up the, the motel room, but just like be careful about touching things because it's not that clean in there. And I was like, okay, I can deal with that. I can deal with the mess, I can deal with this, like everything's fine. We get to this motel room and I walk in the door and there's blood all over the bed. And then I, I, it was just this complete shock because this police officer never said anything. They just said, yeah, your, your dad's body was found. It was a natural death. There's no big deal about it. And then coming there and seeing this huge pile of blood on the bed, going into the washroom and seeing that the, the tub was full of blood and there was just dried, just tons of blood everywhere. And I'm just like, I, I need to know what part of this is natural. Like, I'm like, in my head, I'm just like, what is going on? I don't understand this. Like, they said it was, I, I, I'm just so confused and emotional and just totally in complete shock. And so my mother was really not supportive in, in, at this time. Like, she was so disgusted by the situation that she made me bag up the entire, like, every one of his possessions that I just never got to, like, soak in what they were and she made me throw everything in the place out. I never got to keep anything and then she drives me back to Brampton and my family is all making jokes and they're talking about my dad and they're talking about how he's an alcoholic and like talking about their dad's dying and they're just like the vibe was so light. It was like do you guys recognize what just happened? Do you even know what I had to just go through? Like I just couldn't believe that my own family and understand the gravity of the situation for me like okay I understand to you guys he wasn't your dad and you guys didn't care and that's fine um so I actually had to leave my family and that was like leaving that night was like this the first of like the breakup of my family sorry <laughs> what I felt was not the support that I needed, that I looked to different communities for help. I started going online and I started just going on forums like Buns and just trying to find a family and trying to find connection and solidarity. And I just was looking for somebody to just be like, okay, like it's okay, you're gonna be okay. Like, you know, there's gonna, like, your life isn't over, this is gonna be okay. Um, I really was scared of killing myself. I lived in Regent Park at the time. My surroundings were extremely depressing. Um, I just felt alone and scared. And so I took any money that I had and I went to Vancouver. Um, and ironically, the night that I landed, I was robbed and a homeless man robbed me. And he took everything. 
So the next day I, I was, I just went to bed and the next day I woke up and I started going through um, East Hastings and I started actually like physically looking through the community and I had, I was trying to find my stuff but then it also forced me to look at what homelessness really was. Um, it was just this massive eye-opening thing where I was just like, I couldn't even, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing and it made me so sad and it, it turned everything around from feeling sorry for myself to realizing that there was other people out there that were in such desperate times that they felt that they needed to do something like that. Uh, and it just changed my whole perspective on that. And this community of people that I had never met, I didn't know, complete strangers online, behind my back, gathered the money together and sent me the money to, for a plane ticket home. So when I got back to Toronto, I started just, I switched up my entire social media before it was really heavily on selfies and I worked in the restaurant industry so it was a lot about drinking and partying and just being cool and being hot and like having my makeup done and all that type of like really unnecessary stuff that I was doing. Um, and then I just, I really just started posting positive stuff. I started really developing myself into like this person that I thought was just like super positive and I had so much to offer started getting on the streets and doing my first free hugs, rallying people around. I started getting a lot of media attention. So the first event that I did for homelessness um, was I partnered with this production company that was doing this like really hit show that everybody knew about and I repurposed all of their meals. So I would drive every day over to this production company and I would package up the meals and I would drive them all the way down to the homeless shelter. I would take all of these donations into my apartment and my apartment was completely trashed but I would sort through all of them and then I would personally go out and hand in every single one of them. Um, and I felt really good about what I was doing. I thought I was making a huge impact and I thought I was doing something really amazing which a lot of the times it was really good. When I first started getting that pushback I felt very defensive. Um, and just shamed like I felt um, like at first it was it really was like my fragile self I was just very defensive and very vulnerable and I was just like how dare anybody challenge me like don't you see my story don't you see why I'm allowed to be here don't you see this this is my ticket in here like don't you see that what I'm doing is good don't you want my help and it was so bad because I had this group of women so come after me um, about homelessness and 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 I say come after me like because that's really at the time what I thought it was but now I see that they were really protective over their community and they didn't want some white person coming in and exploiting a very vulnerable community of people that were mostly native um, and I, I see that now but at the time I was like it was really painful but I always took it and tried to grow from it so I was like you know at first those feelings are like very intense and then you have to sit with them and really process why do I feel this way so I've actually taken just such a different approach to social media lately that I'm actually having so much fun with it where I can say my raw truth and my real opinion about racial issues, sexuality issues, like feminist issues, um, and have that where I'm coming from more of a place of an, an educated opinion. I use my platform a lot to try and reach out to these communities that I was centering myself in before, and now I actually just reach out to people and I, I offer opportunities, or um, if somebody offers me to do a speaking gig, I will always make sure that there's place for people of color, that there's a diverse panel, um, I always just, I'm doing um, takeovers now where I'm actually giving up my platform to people that um, have smaller platforms and they need to get their message out there. Something I push, that I've learned to do really often now is to actually pay tangibly to people that I'm learning from because there's so many accounts. I didn't just come up with this knowledge. I didn't just learn this. I had to learn through being called in, being called out, being educated by black women. I'm actually going back to school to, um, and I'm going for hospitality management, was, was something that I was doing before my dad died. And I was opening and running restaurants and I love that sense of community, I love that sense of family. I, I love food and I love that stuff. So I feel that I'm allowed to go do the things that make me happy now and I realize that it's not my duty to insert myself in places, it's just my duty to support and also just work on myself.